Hey everyone, thanks for your time. Given the emphasis that Congress and now the White House has placed on winning a race for the next crewed lunar landing, it intensifies the spotlight on Artemis III. Congress wants to win the race by the end of this presidential term, and the official target for Artemis III is mid-2027. Under the new White House plan, SLS and Orion would retire after Artemis III, along with the Exploration Ground Systems program that supports launch and recovery, regardless of whether the lunar landing happens on that mission or not. Last year, I went through the calendar for the previous target date of September 2026, but it makes sense to start looking at the schedules, the calendar, and the deadlines again, because the stakes are even higher, and now there's no margin for error. We're 26 months away from the middle of 2027 today, and here's what we're watching for those programs, along with Starship and the Axiom EMU. First, Exploration Ground Systems, Orion, and SLS have to complete Artemis II and accomplish the test objectives of that mission. Although they are working to fly sooner, there's still a lot of launch preparation work ahead, and the launch is still officially targeted for next April. In parallel with that work, Orion and SLS have to complete production of two key elements of Artemis III flight hardware, the Orion Crew and Service Modules and the SLS Core Stage. For the Starship HLS Lunar Lander, SpaceX has to demonstrate both ship-to-ship -ship propellant transfer in low Earth orbit and an uncrewed lunar landing before Artemis III, and Starship also has to complete the HLS Critical Design Review for the Option A lander in between. Axiom Space's Axiom EMU Lunar Surface spacesuits are supposed to complete their critical design review this year, and we're also waiting for an update on important precursor vacuum tests. Here's most of what is known in public in May 2025 about the status of that work. I've gone over launch preparations for Artemis II in detail for a while now, given all the recent milestones. Exploration Ground Systems is now processing Orion and SLS for launch, and the goal is to be ready to stack Orion on the SLS at the end of the summer, beginning of the fall. Production status on the remaining unfinished Artemis III flight hardware is updated less frequently, but I am hoping to get more updates soon. At a high level, the last we heard was that the Orion crew and service modules are in standalone integration and test by prime contractor Lockheed Martin. Similarly, with the SLS core stage, the individual elements are working towards the end of their standalone integration and test. Dates are under review, and we haven't got an update to the contracted dates since the last delay. But it still seems like the earliest those two key Artemis III pieces would be completed and turned over to EGS is sometime next year. We know little about the interim dates for Axiom and SpaceX development of their pieces because planning and production work milestones are mostly kept secret. SpaceX has flight tested eight Starship prototypes in the last two years, and the ninth could be soon. After a couple of setbacks with upgrades to the ship, hopefully we'll get an update on the next milestone around this next test. Once those next big flight test demonstrations are complete, Artemis II and the Starship prop transfer demo, how much time will it take to be ready for Artemis III? For EGS, Orion, and SLS, NASA had a long-standing goal to fly Artemis III, or at least be ready to fly Artemis III, 12 months after Artemis II. That was the goal two years ago, shortly after the Artemis I uncrewed test flight was completed. However, by the end of last year, NASA leadership at the time was projecting up to 15 months. You know, I think what we've highlighted here is just one piece of the learning we've done from Artemis 1 to Artemis 2. Um, and the heat, as I say, heat shield's one of those. Uh, we learned a lot about the vehicle performance. Um, we learned a lot about uh, things that happened on the service module and the crew module. Um, we obviously would like that time to be shorter. Um, I think some of the things that, <clears throat> excuse me, you've heard about about manufacturing is important. We need to do better on our delivery. We're understanding the vehicle better. We have multiple vehicles in flow. I talked about Artemis III, the, uh, uh, the environmental control life support system we found there in Forming II. That put some uh, delay in our schedule, some of the uh, electronic design that we learned about. So. Uh, from our perspective, I, I respect what you're saying about our appropriations. From our perspective, our job is to get better. Six years to one, four years to two. 
Um, the confidence, the proof is in the pudding on, on the time from two to three. Um, we learned, the other thing I'll mention in exploration ground systems, we learned after, uh, uh, after one, the, the damage to the pad that we didn't expect. So we've uh, implemented changes in our design of the Mobile Launcher 1, which now is on Mobile Launcher 2 as well. We've incorporated that design there, uh, those design improvements. So each time we are uh, feeding back the design, every vehicle that's in flow at the same time, we're feeding back into the design and manufacturing as well. So that two to three period, our, our plan is that 12 to 15 months um, but we have to prove that, and uh, but our goal right now is getting to a, a safe uh, return of Reed and his crew on two, and then pushing our way on to three. With the latest reset of the Artemis 2 and 3 dates in December, the Artemis 3 launch date was moved closer to 15 months away from the April 2026 date for Artemis 2. But that's likely only estimating the soonest that the SLS launch of the Artemis 3 Orion could occur and not factoring in other schedules. That launch won't occur until after Starship is stationed in the gateway near rectilinear halo orbit after an HLS lunar orbit checkout review is completed. If we assume that SLS and Orion have to be stacked in the VAB at Kennedy Space Center and ready to finish the final preps to roll out to the pad for launch at the time of that review, then we can work backwards from there to figure out what the deadlines for earlier milestones would be. Until or unless there is a schedule update for Starship HLS, similarly, we can only estimate what the pre-launch deadlines would be. If that lunar orbit checkout review was staged at L-30 days and we use July 2027 as the launch date, that would make the deadline early June 2027. And then we can work back from there. For Axiom Space, we don't have a roadmap to work from either, but we can work backwards from an HLS Starship launch deadline to figure out the deadline for the Axiom EMU suits to be loaded on the ship pre-launch. So let's go through that using early July 2027, around the U.S. Independence Day 4th of July, as a launch date. This is an estimated timeline for processing the Artemis 3 SLS and Orion flight hardware for launch, assuming something similar to the optimistic timeline that we're seeing used for Artemis 2, but with a more streamlined process at the beginning. That also assumes a standard post-flight review for Artemis 2 without any issues like the one with the Orion base heat shield on Artemis 1. So, assuming that the vehicle is ready to roll out to the pad at the time of the Starship Lunar Orbit Checkout Review, that puts Orion stacking in the VAB at about L-3 months. Using the 5-month Orion stacking prep timeline that is the goal for Artemis 2, then EGS would need to take custody of Orion at L-8 months. The core stage would need to be ready to stack to the boosters about a month before that at L-9 months, add another month for EGS stacking preps to the core stage, and then I'm assuming that the mobile launcher and SLS boosters would need to be ready for stacking at L-12 months. That would put the deadline for the solid rocket motor segments and other hardware to ship to Kennedy Space Center in the L-15 month time frame. Those are transported by train from Northrop Grumman's Promontory Production Facility in northern Utah. For Starship, again using the Lunar Orbit Checkout Review at L-1 month or L-4 weeks, then HLS would need to make the trip from Earth orbit to the nearer rectilinear halo orbit a week prior to that, or L-5 weeks. NASA's estimates as a part of the Key Decision Point C review in late 2023 put the Operational Readiness Review or Flight Readiness Review at L-4 months, which I'm assuming would mark the point where the depot was ready in Earth orbit and tanker flights would begin. We don't know how much time NASA or SpaceX is projecting between the uncrewed lunar landing demo and the flight readiness review, but for this I'll assume another four months to review and make any changes, putting completion of that at L-8 months. For the spacesuits, the only milestone here is the deadline for the suits to be installed in the HLS Starship before it is launched. And for this, I'm assuming installation two months before the HLS launch itself. So here's what that looks like for a July 2027 Artemis 3 launch. These are rough estimates, of course, but they help visualize how much time is left to make the current target launch date. 
L-18 months would be the deadline for naming an Artemis III flight crew. On this timeline, that would be January, not that far away. L-15 months would be April 2026, so sometime around the Artemis II mission, perhaps even before, the SLS-5 segment solid rocket booster motors would need to arrive at Kennedy Space Center. That's only about a year from today. L-12 months would be July 2026, when the mobile launcher would need to be ready to start stacking the boosters, and those booster segments would also need to be ready. The aft assemblies that would need to be built up in the rotation processing and search facility at Kennedy Space Center. Obviously, ML-1 won't be available until after the Artemis II launch and subsequent refurbishing. If we assume that Artemis II launch around the official date of next April, that would give EGS about three months to refurbish the ML to begin stacking. L-10 months is September 2026. That's where I have the deadline for Boeing to finish the SLS core stage and hand it over to EGS. EGS and their prime contractor, Amentum, have a couple of weeks of work to install elements of the flight termination system in the core stage's systems tunnel before it's ready to be lifted and mated to the booster. L-8 months is November 2026. That's only 18 months from now. That would be the deadline for when Orion would need to be completed by Lockheed Martin and handed over to EGS. That would also be around the time when SpaceX would need to have the crewed lunar landing demonstration complete. That's also very close to the time of the next Mars transfer window that Elon Musk has promised a Starship flight to Mars. Moving into 2027, L-4 months would be in March in a little less than two years from now. By that time, NASA would need to be conducting the HLS, ORR, and FRR. The depot Starship would need to be in low Earth orbit and ready to support tanker launches, and those would need to start. That's about the time that the Axiom EMU spacesuits would need to be ready to load into the HLS Starship pre-launch. The next month, in April 2027, Orion would need to be ready to stack on SLS. That means all the standalone SLS preps and checkout in the VAB would need to be complete by then. By mid-April 2027, HLS would need to be launched to the depot to begin the process of fully loading it for Artemis 3, where it will go to the moon, land two of the Artemis 3 flight crew for a week-long surface stay, and then lift off from the moon and return them back to Orion in the gateway orbit. By the end of May 2027, the HLS should be fully refueled and ready to make the trip to the moon at L-5 weeks. It should be station keeping in the gateway orbit a week later in time to do the checkout review and clear SLS and Orion for final launch preps. That would be the beginning of June 2027, which is basically two years from now. This leaves out some critical development milestones between now and then. If the Starship uncrewed demo is 18 months away, then the critical design review would need to be completed before that. And that review is contingent on completing the propellant transfer demo before the CDR. We don't know where those would happen. The only reference point we have is from that KDPC review schedule. Back at the end of 2023, that projected the Starship checkout review not in June of 2027, but in February of 2028. On that schedule, the HLS critical design review was projected to be this August, three months from now. Similarly, for the Axiom EMU suit, they have a critical design review scheduled for 2025 and a human-in-the-loop vacuum test before that, according to the Government Accounting Office last year. The schedules for the other programs also fit in this combination of optimistic scenarios but we can see that the deadlines for the Orion and SLS core stage deliveries are a little more than a year away, a little less than 18 months away in this scenario. As this year goes by, we'll be watching the other big newsmakers, Artemis II, Starship flight tests, the budget, the politics, and so on. But now that the big stakes for Artemis III are even bigger, and the margin for error could be cut to zero, it will be useful to return to these deadlines and see if we have any better visibility into the chances that the programs can meet them. Thanks as always for watching. Click on the like button if you found this video informative, and consider subscribing to find out what's going on with Artemis every week.
I also recently added memberships to this YouTube channel, and as always, thanks to all the people who have joined so far. I'm posting additional videos there and more frequent updates on what's happening during the week. If you're interested, click on a Join button on this page or on the main channel homepage. If you're willing to make a one-time donation to support what I do, I would really appreciate it. I put a link to my Buy Me a Coffee page in the description. Your donations will make it possible to make more field trips to NASA centers and contractor facilities here in the U.S. Thanks again.